the show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's June 22nd, 2022. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. Joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day, presented as always by Life Wallet, where the time is now to take charge of your personal health. And um, Matt, I thought we'd start out today. Yesterday, we talked a lot about quarterbacks. I thought we'd uh, go back to the tight ends today because um, it's a little interesting. I mean, um, you've got Riley Williams, who visited Miami last weekend on the heels of commitments by uh, Jackson Carver and Reed McKeska. And now everything that we are hearing as we sit here in midweek following the Riley Williams visit is that Riley Williams is about to commit to the Miami Hurricanes too. Could it be um, this assortment of riches at the U, at the tight end position? Is it possible that the Canes end up with three of the top Mm. tight ends in the country? Tell me, Matt Shodell. Tell me. That's not the story, man. And don't be be short on your response either because uh, we were getting some criticism yesterday. The yesterday's show was only 16 minutes long. So we got to go at least 18 to 20 today. So give me a nice, long, um, detailed answer to my question. Can the no. game, Can the Canes get three of the top tight ends in the country? Yeah, no, I'm not answering your question. But I will say what I want to say, which is the story isn't the three tight ends. The story is, this is what's great, and nobody's really mentioned it yet, but we have a story up this morning we should talk about, which, you know, obviously everyone sort of knows that Nathaniel Joseph's going to be a Cane at some point. He was a, a Clemson commit. Reed McKeska is a tight end you just mentioned. He was a Clemson commit. And Riley Williams, who you were talking about, everyone said he was going to Oregon. So Mario Cristobal has, is sticking it to the eight, to the Miami's main ACC competitor. He's sticking it to the team that that you know that he left. I mean, he's got to be just thrilled, you know. I think <laughs> I don't know what's next. I guess Alabama's who he goes after next. Um, but for those of you that know Mario, you know he's loving this stuff. I mean, he's loving. If every every Clemson commit he could take away, you know, everyone says Clemson's the the team to beat in the ACC. So every Clemson committee could take away. He's just loving it. Um, anybody he can grab from Oregon, you know, he's just loving that too. Uh, so I'm happy for Mario, you know, not so happy for the tight ends because like with taking two quarterbacks, I'm not a big fan of taking three tight ends in a class, mainly because you want, again, you want to balance classes. Nobody likes talking about numbers. So I'm not going to talk about numbers, but you, you think about it this way. Let's say there's an amazing 2024 tight end, just the number one guy in the country. And maybe he would have come here. If we get three tight ends that actually wind up sticking in the class, I'm not sure we do, but is that number one guy still going to want to come when you have three freshman tight ends, one sophomore tight end, and a junior tight end at, at moving forward a year, obviously, with the other two guys? You could shake your head all you want, but it's true. Five tight ends on the right. roster, three First of them being true freshmen. You may not get the top tight end in the country the next class, whereas maybe otherwise you would. So that's all. That, that's my only thought on it. But I, I'll take all three of these guys all day long. All day long. Uh, all right. So let's break, let's break this down. Okay. Number one, I'm already uh, buying tickets for the sumo wrestling match that's going to take place this weekend between Matt Shodell and Stephen Field. Uh, The guy is recruiting like an absolute maniac, okay? He's got these three top-shelf tight ends that are either in the boat or about to jump in the boat and is by far, so far, the recruiter of the year at Miami, okay? Um, If... If he wants to take three, I'm all for it, man. You know, it, 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 it's like, you know, they're going to play three. And you're only going to have Jaleel Skinner for probably three years. I feel fairly comfortable predicting that. Uh, this year will be year one. So the other two young kids will come in and you'll have Skinner. Uh, and you'll still have Arroyo. Mallory's gone. So you're going to have, you'll have basically four really good players at the position um, of tight end. Knowing that you're going to play, and listen, let's not least, over. I feel bad for Khalil Brant. Khalil Brantley looked good in the spring. Khalil Brantley not- is not going to be here long term. He cannot hang with this level of player, and it's no knock on Khalil Brantley. Very nice kid. It's no he, knock on Khalil Brantley. You just knocked him. How can you knock him? He's not good enough. You just said he's not good enough. You said he's not good enough. It's not a knock on him. Are you kidding me? He can't hang with these guys. This will be his last year in the program. I feel fine. fairly. But that's fine. But don't say you're not knocking him. I'm you're not knocking, knocking him. him. 
It's you're not knocking him, bro. No, I'm not knocking him, bro. Listen, it's not Khalil's fault. And I, I know I used him as an example before, and I like Khalil Brantley. Uh, do I think he should have come to Miami? Not really. Uh, I, I think that Miami needed to be reaching higher than that when they took him. Yeah. And I think they are reaching higher now, and they are getting better players at the tight end position than what Khalil Brantley is capable of. There I don't understand many... what it means to knock somebody. I don't. I think you think I'm knocking not somebody knocking like knock on their door, maybe because what you're doing is Matt, definitely knocking Khalil Brantley. Man, I can only write as well as I can write. You can only write as well as you can write. Are we the best writers in the United States of America? No. Okay. Can we hold our own? At the, uh, you know, of, of course we can. It doesn't mean we're bad. Khalil Brantley can hold his own. I don't know but, how now but I'm not going to say he's a top shelf tight end in college football. He is not, and he is not going to be. There are many programs that he could transfer to where he could play college football and have a nice career and and be, be, you know a nice fulfilling last two three years. So, so let me get this straight. I'm having a sumo wrestling match, which, by the way, I would not mention sumo wrestling, period, in comparison to anybody because, you know. I think Steve Field's going to want to kick your butt. That's fine, I mean, but you I know how hard, wrestling. You know how hard he has worked to recruit these kids? And, Listen. And you're saying don't take all three of them if all three want to come? I'm not, I'm not yeah. worried. You come for me, Stephen Field. I'm not worried because I've been playing tennis. I'll just run away, man. I probably got a 5'4", 5'5", 40 going right now. I'm not worried well, at all. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at you. Come, you got, you got – you got beads of sweat on your forehead. I probably do. I was just, I was literally, yeah, you had, you had, you, this morning. You, you, you had, you have one on your chin. Like, what did you go to the gym before we taped? The show? I did. I worked out already. Oh my God. I don't waste um, any time. I got to be able to run away from Steven Fields. I'm training. Before you, before you come tape, will you at least like take a shower or something? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Stephen Fields worked his butt off recruiting these guys. And if Stephen all three of them Listen, and he and Stephen Field, you know, you Mario, know if he could get Mario to take all three, the Listen, way he's Stephen working, Field, is, and, they, and they all want to come, you absolutely take them, and you see where it goes. I mean, listen, maybe one of them grows into an offensive tackle. Who the heck knows what's going to happen in the next couple of years? Um, or I don't maybe, know why. I don't know where you're getting. Stephen Field is an unbelievable recruiter. Like, I don't know why he'd be attacking me. I'm talking about the tight end position and the numbers. Because you're, you're saying he shouldn't take all three, and he's been working his butt off on these guys, and all three want to come. That's how good a recruiter he is. Yeah. And and to me, you know what the greatest positive is, Matt, of all this? Stephen Field's done recruiting tight ends, bro. He can spend the next five months helping out at other positions. Because no, let me tell you something. You really don't understand how things work, do you? You don't think Stephen Field today and tomorrow and the next day is going to be on the phone with every 24 and 2025 and 2026 tenant in the country trying to get him out here Saturday and getting those relationships going? It doesn't stop. Recruiting I never I think he'll be off. pitching in at other positions. He could have three recruits for this year and three recruits for next year, and he'd still be recruiting a tight end for the future. I'm telling I you. I think he'll be pitching in at other positions. That's what I think. If he gets these three guys and they're all really coming – uh, he's at most going to take one tight end in 2024, and uh, I think he'll be able to handle that. I really do. I don't think you have to worry about that, Matt. I think Stephen Fields got this thing under control. I, I think that, if anything, it should lay down the gauntlet up and down the program because everybody should be recruiting like Stephen Fields. Well, that's and the thing. So so every every this is the thing. You say Stephen, recruit, Stephen Fields should recruit everybody, but you're wrong because they already – I said he's going to help out in other places. But – I didn't okay, say I, I still can't talk. talk. Still, I didn't still... say feed Mario Cristobal, the, the Tasmanian devil of recruiting, and recruit 40 guys at one time. No, I didn't say that. What I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted by somebody who may or may not be named Gary Furman was this staff, unlike past staffs, all chip in. When a recruit goes on a visit and I say to them, who was who was the coach you spent the most time with? It's everybody. You know, when you see the photos they send out, it's every single coach in the photo. And that's not just by accident. They want these players to feel part of a family, not a connection just with their position coach. So when you say have Stephen Field help out, that's all I'm saying. He already is helping out. It's not like this is anything. But he's not different. helping out to the degree that I'm talking about. I'm talking about actively getting involved in the recruitment of players and engaging with their coaches, engaging with them, and helping out other members of the staff who – you know, may or may or may not be having the easiest way in recruiting right now. I mean, yeah, he could help whoever, whoever you know, he's it's, way, it's way too early to say any position group is failing in recruiting right now. But clearly, the tight end position is standing out like crazy, like crazy steroids because of the quality of recruiting of Stephen Field. I mean, right? Wouldn't you agree with that, Matt? Oh, 100%. I mean, Stephen yeah. Field, it's not new. Stephen Field's always been a great recruiter. He, 
I, listen, I'm, I'm friendly with Stephen Field. I know him very well. He is, he's a personable coach. He's, he's, he makes recruits feel like he's their friend and also a mentor to them, which it sounds like every coach should do that, but they don't, you know, it's rare. And he's coached the high school level. He started at the bottom. I remember him when he was a GA or some intern at Miami. I mean, I would talk to him back then. That's when we started becoming friends. And he started at the bottom. He knows what hard work does for you. Where some of these coaches, you know, maybe they didn't start quite as low down as he did, you know. Maybe because he went from college back to high school, back to college, you know, sort of like Alex Mirabal. They sort of Hampton, appreciate. He was the head coach at Miami Northwestern Correct. for a few they, years. They, like... Right. Coaches like that appreciate where they are. They know they've worked hard to get there. And they know they have to keep working hard versus some of these coaches who were started in the NFL as interns and they look at college as a step down and like, you know, it's just a different mentality. His mentality is work, work, work. And he's just got the personality for it. Unbelievable recruiter, great tight ends coach. And that's why kids are coming period. And so maybe he won't chase me now when I see him at, uh, at legends camp, right? Maybe he'll leave me alone now. We'll you better see. hope he doesn't, he doesn't wake up and watch the show and hear you say that he shouldn't take all three of these guys that want to come. So guess what? Uh, he probably agree with me. <laughs> well, well, we're going to find out, aren't we, Matt? Because it looks like Riley Williams wants to come to the U, and he's already got the other two committed. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Um, all right. So let's talk about five-star Samson uh, Okanola, who is an absolute obvious big-time target, and he's going to be on campus this weekend, Matt, as part of Legends Weekend, and. Um, yet another, you know, five-star kid, big time player that is coming to visit the U. Um, when does Miami start to land some of these guys? Well, that's the big question that these, and I was talking to you about it yesterday, you know, um, there's going to be failure. Okay. You, you can't just instantly go from what Miami's been for 20 years and expect every five-star and four-star to come here. It's great that they're getting them to visit. It's great that they're trying because those were things that didn't happen for the last 20 years. And what I want fans to understand is when they fail on 30 top recruits that have a Miami hat in front of them over the next six months and they pick a different hat, it's just the beginning. This is how you begin. This is how you start. Once you have success on the field, once you're in the ACC championship game, once you're playing close games with the Clemsons and Texas A&Ms of the world, uh, once you're putting guys in the NFL, once you're developing defensive linemen into prospects that make some money at the next level, and the same thing at, at every position, that's when you can go into a recruit's house in November, in December, when you, as allowed by the rules. The one visit the head coach has, you've got that presentation. Here's what we did with defensive linemen the last year, the year before, assuming they're here for, you know, at three years out, whatever it is, they can point to their track record. They say, look what we did at Oregon, right? Um, with players like you. And that in conjunction with hopefully NIL deals should get top recruits here. The problem is going to be, and, and this is why I was, it's, it's, it's sort of push and pull with me. And I see both sides on it. Okay. I really want this team to build for, be a national championship team in two to three years. I don't want to waste one of the 85 spots on someone who's going to be here for two or three years. I don't think it's any good. You know, that's my thing. But I see why Mario Cristobal is taking double digit. I think it's, what is it, 12 transfers. Uh, because he understands that in recruiting, if he wins seven games or eight games this year, the negativity around the program is going to be to the point that he's not going to get recruits. <laughs> They're going to jump ship. Because he's going to have to get a lot of top local kids. That's a fact. To build a program to a national title contender. And those are the kids who are hearing everyone at school. Miami sucks. Miami's this. Miami's that. Which is what every recruit's been hearing for the last 20 years. Um, so he understands. So that's why it's a push and pull. And that's why I do see both sides. I'm still in favor of just, you know, let's just win eight or nine games this year. And, and take every top recruit you can fit in 2024 and 2023. Uh, because I don't think they're going to the national championship this year. So... You know, you take 12 kids that are on the roster for two or three years. I, I guess he feels he has to just because of the way the roster is. But it's just such a tough call, man. It, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, where this goes. Because they, they do need to win probably nine games this year to get that on the, you know, we're, we're, on the, we're on a roll type of thing going. 
And if they don't, and they've wasted 12 spots on ju- on a Juco kid and 11 transfers, and they don't get it, and they get only win seven or eight games this year, now you've filled up your roster with guys who aren't that good, obviously. You, you, you know, do you jettison half your roster uh, who are all sophomores at that point? You know, like, I don't know. These are the questions. I'm just po- posing questions for you guys. I'm not saying I have the answers. I don't have the answers, but this is what's going on. This is what Mario Cristobal has decided to do. This is the path he is taking. He has decided... I'm filling up the roster to the 85 limit with a lot of transfers, a lot of young kids, and I'm hoping we win nine or 10 games so I can get more recruits, get rid of the fat, and want to roll. If they only win seven or eight this year, the negativity is there. I don't know what happens. I really don't. All right, let's put this in perspective, okay? So they just finished the first few days of the week. They had two four-star offensive linemen in for visits that they absolutely will take if they'll come, Peyton Kirkland and Francis uh, Magoa. Okay, if either one of those or both of them want to come, and, and, and we should start to get some reports later today on those visits and how they went, and uh, keep an eye on the website for that. Uh, obviously, those two are takes. And then they've got this five star stud, a 6'5, 300 pounder from Braintree, Massachusetts, the Samson Okanola kid who's going to come in this weekend. And uh, look, he's taken official visits to Alabama, to Michigan State. So far, he's probably going to take a couple more official visits in the fall. Um, I mean, think he, this is a kid who's can, he's considering Oklahoma, Georgia, Penn State, Ohio State, Florida. This is a kid that can go anywhere he wants. Okay, so we're not going to sit here and predict anything because he's coming this weekend on an official visit. But this is a good weekend for him to come. Uh, should be a nice atmosphere at the Legends Camp, and um, you know. Th- Theoretically, he should have a really good time. So, uh, look, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll be checking in with him as well this weekend. Uh, that's three elite offensive linemen um, that are, without question, in the mix uh, for the Hurricanes. And uh, remember, there's a whole bunch more also in, in the mix. I mean, you know, we've been talking for weeks about – how Alex Mirabal seem, seemingly has, you know, 40, 50 um, commitments out there. Offers. I mean, not commitments, offers out there for offensive linemen. It's a huge, huge area of emphasis, obviously, in recruiting. And, um, you know, Matt, I asked you this question uh, kind of earlier, but um, I think it's getting to be about time for them to start getting some commits from some of these kids. I really do. Yeah, but like I said, it's a long road. This is what I'm trying to say. So they're like I said yesterday, they're bringing the out of out of town kids in June, which makes a lot of sense. You're bringing the local kids in November and December, and that's why I'm saying they need to have a really good season. Which is why I could see why Mario wants to do what he's done and try to win this year, at least win nine or ten games. Uh, but yeah, it's it's recruiting doesn't end in July. You know, you can get three tight end commits now. You can get two quarterback commits now. Recruiting, honestly. Isn't just about getting commitments. It's more about getting players to sign. <laughs> you know, that's recruiting. Fans like to think it's about committing commitments. It's not. You know, I mean, I, I, I joke with some 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 of the guys that I see because some of them have some of the old guys. When I see him again, you know, we we were laughing. I'm trying to remember who it was, but he he committed to three different schools. Who was it? Um, it was uh, the peanut guy. Well, <laughs> who am I thinking of? Uh, Lance Leggett. Lance Leggett committed to three different schools. Actually, he committed to Miami first, decommitted to another school, decommitted to another school, and then committed back to Miami at the end. We were joking about that the other day. But he's not the only one that's like that. So so it's a process. You know, people always – I hate the word process personally, um, but it, it, it is. It's not like you can just say, okay, he committed, that's it. He's done because schools keep pushing. I mean, you look at Riley Williams, man. When, when he, when he <laughs> eliminated Oregon from his list – and said, here's the three I'm announcing July 1st. I mean, Oregon went nuts, man. You know, they were yeah. blowing up his family phone. They were calling his coaches. They, yeah, they, they couldn't to, believe it. They're trying desperately to get him on campus before he announces. The whole plan was for him to take the Oregon visit and decide in August and think about it all of July. And it took him totally off guard, um, which, is, which is actually sort of hilarious. <laughs> you know, I like it when recruits do that, right? Just, ah, this is it. I'm, I'm just, you know, you're out of it. Sorry. Don't even give the coach a head up, a heads up. You know, just announce it through through a bunch of websites, and then the coaches go nuts and try to get a hold of you. 
So we'll see what happens. I, obviously, I think I think Miami is going to get Riley Williams. Uh, I think Miami is going to get Nathaniel Joseph, and um, and the Samson Okamola kid is sort of an interesting story. I, I don't think he winds up here, but you know, I hadn't talked to him before, and I tried to bond with him a little bit. You know, he's from my neck of the woods where I went to college. So I said, you know, I spent four years up in Medford, Somerville area. And he's like, yeah, I know that area. <laughs> he didn't seem very excited <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah, he's not interested in all that. No, he's not interested. There's no small talk. Just get right to business. But it, that these are the best. Like, I got to tell you, like the best offensive linemen are the ones who don't care. They don't they care about doing an interview. They just want to do, they just want to get to work. You know, <laughs> it was nice of him to spend a few minutes talking to me. But I could tell he was way more interested in like going to do a workout than he was talking to some reporter from Miami who happened to live in Medford at one point. You know, <laughs> I have no problem with that. I sort of like that kid a lot. It's, it's, I hope he has a fun time down here. All right, there's one more story that we want to talk about today. But first, let's hear from our friends at LifeWire. I will be your shield in the fiercest battle. I'll defend you. Yeah. Hey, my name is Cleveland Reed, and I play offensive line, and my job is to protect. I protect my family with Life Wallet. How about you? Of course, I got Life Wallet. It's the best way to protect my family. Long as we go together, we'll die, we never be a light. Couldn't let the darkness try you ever. Truth in my word, you I lied to never. To protect you and your family, get Life Wallet now. Life Wallet. Saving time, saving lives. All right, Matt, you, um, you mentioned him earlier, um, but last and not least, but today, I, I, I want to talk even more than we have already about uh, Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph because uh, he's decommitted from Clemson now, and we've got him on commitment watch, um, and he's not disputing to us this week that he may have a decision made before this Legends weekend is over, and uh, Obviously, that would be a huge deal, uh, but we think he's headed to the Miami Hurricanes. And uh, your thoughts on this long, winding road, but the fact that it looks like it's going to end in a good spot for the Hurricanes. I'm such a I'm such a fan of this kid. I just I'm just going to read some of the texts he sent me way back when. I don't I don't have dates. I just have times. Oh no, okay, this is in April. Okay, April third, we got word that he visited Miami. Um, he was a Clemson commitment, obviously. Clemson doesn't allow recruits to commit. So I said, you know, is it okay to call you, do a quick update on how the, the Miami visit went? He responds, I was at Miami undercover. Clemson be tripping. And then I said, okay, no worries. Then we got word again, April 16th, two weeks later, that, um, that he was at the spring game. So I said, you know, can we do a quick update? Just send me a quote. We're doing a wrap-up on the spring game. He says, I was there undercover. Clemson be tripping out there. Commits going out. You know, oh, I guess they're tripping about their commits going out, right? And then I have another text to him May 15th, so a month later. So this is what I'm trying to say is he came to Miami so many times secretly <laughs> without wanting Clemson to know because Clemson, like, freaks out every time he goes out of the house. I think they yeah. put him in a position, one of their assistant coaches, like, literally outside his door. So May 15th, can we? Is, uh, I finally got the hint that he didn't want us to report this stuff. So I texted him. I said, is it okay for us to report your Miami visit today? Or are you keeping it quiet for now, Matt? And he says, keep it quiet for now. I'm going up to Clemson in June. If it doesn't go well or I'm not feeling it, I will flip. And, uh, you know, he visited up there. He didn't flip. He wound up decommitting a couple weeks later. And uh, I personally think he's going to wind up at Miami. We've been saying this for a while. And this is why I've been saying it for a while is because I've been talking to him. I've been talking to his coach. Uh, everyone yeah. knows his coach, Luther Campbell. And it was just a matter of time. Uh, it was just it was obvious. He yeah, was never sticking with Clemson. I mean, we knew it. You know, he knew it. Uh, and it just this is just the way it's playing out. So he uh, he took an official visit to Louisville. He's got Texas A and M and Alabama coming after him now. Uh, FSU is coming after him now. But my personal feeling is he's going to commit to Miami over the weekend, probably on Saturday, uh, or else early next week. And even if he doesn't, it, it, he's gonna like he's more committed to me than some of the commitments. Like I said that the other day. I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't. It, he loves Miami's program. Like these are the kind of recruits you want. Top local recruit. Everyone wants him. He wants to star for the hometown team in front of his family. Period. Period. Yeah. Period. He's and he's not about the drama. I mean, 
Clemson was about the drama, right? And he was he was trying to avoid the drama by saying, we can't report it, don't report it. Clemson's tripping, Clemson's script tripping, don't report it. He's avoiding the drama, which was smart of him. But I had a really nice conversation with him um, yesterday. You know, we wrote the story up last night for this morning. And uh, I mean, it's just the nicest kid in the world. And he just really is trying to do things the right way, you know, and um, called Clemson, decommitted, went, went on a visit, going on another visit, and he'll see where he's where he is. Uh, that's it. He's doing it the right way. Unlike um, somebody whose name rhymes with Hayden Machada, who's making me crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm frustrated with with him. Yeah, well, he's here now, so we'll see what I happens. I know. I know. Listen, I, and and I shouldn't say it, it's. I'm not frustrated with him. I'm frustrated with the situation because there was such great communication, and then it just stopped for no reason. Yeah, and but, I, you know, I understand. I mean, down yeah. There. It's frustrating, but uh, but I like I said as a reporter, it's frustrating. I know, but like I said on yesterday's show, like sometimes you you gotta you gotta like understand what these families are going through. I mean, I mean, it's culture shock, man. I mean, and just look at Miami at all the people that want to call themselves recruiting reporters just in our market. Like that's part of the problem. People that are they're on. I mean, they're they're not they're, they're reporting for their twitters and stuff. Yet they're trying to call these kids and harass. I mean, it's 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 like it's insane what these kids go through, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, the know. problem is, you know, I've been doing this for so long, and especially with quarterbacks, you sort of build a rapport with the quarterback and his dad, and you expect, okay, like if I just text him for a quick, are you actually visiting? You expect to at least get yes, <laughs> you know, like yes, I'm visiting. Just that. That's all we want. And then we have to find out from sources instead. It's fr- that's why I say I'm frustrated. Love Jaden as a person. Love his dad as a person. It's just frustrating as a reporter that you had a, a rapport and then it got ruined because of all the crazy craziness. All the craziness of the outside ruins um, what, you know, what what would have been a fun recruitment to cover. This now maybe not there'll be, be a rekindling this week, Matt. Maybe his official visit right now yeah. is going yeah, great. There you go. Maybe Mario Cristobal is going to get him to commit to the Canes. I don't think it is out of the question. I'm not going to predict it. Uh, that it was. Well, I know your theory, Gary. I know your theory. Right. If if they start responding to me after the visit, I know your theory is he's coming to Miami. That's your theory, right? Uh, that's often an indicator. And I mean, if they're not responding, it usually is. You know, we have found, I would say, ninety six times out of a hundred that they're not coming. Yeah, I that's mean, Gary. That's Gary Furman's recruiting machine. G F R M. The G F R M. Gary Furman is usually machine. right. That, that is correct. <laughs> you, you know, you got to be able to read the tea leaves in recruiting. Um, all right, uh, everyone, we thank everybody for uh, for joining us this morning. As, as always, it's uh, we're, we're we're honored to start our day with you guys. Um, we'll come back at you again tomorrow with uh, hopefully some good news on some of these recruiting fronts. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time, everybody.